behind me is the first real sign residents of the Magic City have seen of flood protection. This project was a priority in order to make sure that the water supply for this entire area remains safe in the event of another flood. Just in the last five to ten minutes, the Minot Police Department's bomb squad has sent the robot in the house. Now this will confirm to them whether or not the man that they think is in there actually is. Historically, Native American veterans live in rural areas like Rowlett County. Today, several of them were here at Turtle Mountain Community College to speak with Senator Heidi Heitkamp about issues from housing to health care. I made some new friends out here. This is Stella and Kitty Cat, and I'm out here with their trainer, Steffi. What would a fair be without food? We've been talking about it all day. I have the fair food frenzy first and second place winners with me. Syrah, almost 20 reports of Christmas decoration thefts have been called in in just the past two days. This Grinch is leaving a string of unhappy kids and families this season of giving. We are inside the grandstand right now getting a behind the scenes look at the switch over there going from concerts over the weekend. Now the next two days we've got enduro races and for the first time ever, monster trucks are going to be right out here at the the grandstand. Part of that education comes from clipboards like these handed out to coaches so they're prepared on the sidelines, giving them access to concussion symptoms to watch out for, such as memory problems. There's questions on here to ask after a big hit like where are we and what half is it? Plus, there's a balance test that can also help determine if there's been a concussion or not. I've got a little bit of everything all around me. We've got Superman over here. There's a furry over here. I've got knights and villains, all kinds of cool people. Now, while I didn't catch that fish that I was oh. holding on to, it was so fun to hang out with those guys and something I can definitely cross off my North Dakota bucket list. Katie, what was it like walking on the ice? What was what Not as scary as you would think. The, you, it's pretty solid, the snow yeah. th out there, because there's nothing to block the wind. So there's just wind and snow ever, like blowing all over the place. But we didn't hear a lot of cracking or anything like oh. that. So it was, it was good. Part of the Peace Garden experience. Exactly. Yeah. It was really, really fun. New at 10 tonight, Minot police arrested a man for murder connected to a stabbing today. At 539 this evening, police responded to a call at 2022 4th Avenue Northwest in Minot near the Dairy Queen. It happened in that upstairs apartment. According to police, a 28-year-old man was found stabbed to death. They immediately began questioning one person. Call it a landmark day for the city of Minot as the first flight leaves the brand new terminal. Good evening, I'm Katie Perkins. Residents of the Magic City will hit the polling stations tomorrow for a special election and it may look like a blast from the past. There's a push to change the structure of the city council, but before they can do that, voters have to approve two changes in the city's home rule charter. And I'm Katie Perkins. Thanks for joining us. Gas prices in North Dakota are at the lowest since 2004 at about $1.64 a gallon. While it's good news for consumers, low prices have had a negative impact on jobs and the state budget. Last month, Bach and Crude sold at $20 a barrel. March of 2002 was the last time we saw Bach and Crude at $20 a barrel. So the big question is, has the price hit rock bottom? West Texas Intermediate is currently selling around $33 a barrel. Bakken Sweet Crude is 15% lower at $28. Eugene Grainer from Heartland Investors says he thinks prices are going to rebound. A reason why has to do with the value of our dollar. Although there is optimism, the market could turn around. Right now, low prices are having an adverse effect on the state's oil industry. The flood protection timeline is complicated. For the city, its 15-phase, $1 billion project is going to take more than 20 years to complete. We haven't been just sitting around since the flood trying to decide what to do. Uh, there's a lot of planning and design that goes into a project of this magnitude. It's a tremendous challenge on a day-to-day -day basis to f try to figure out where the funding is going to go, um, how much funding we have, where we're going to get new funding, and, and then, you know, to balance that against all the other needs that the city has. The but if done properly, people in Minot will see a major impact. If we can complete the first four phases of the flood protection and then construct some tieback levees on either end to high ground, we could essentially remove about 60% of those properties from the floodplain. Design, funding, and environmental impact studies tie up projects for years, and the city says they understand the frustration this can cause. We really do understand, even though I think sometimes people forget that because we do have a job to do also, so it does make it difficult sometimes. What the city and Suris River Joint Board are working on to protect the area doesn't include the $74 million Minot won in the HUD Resiliency Program to improve infrastructure, create resilient, affordable neighborhoods, and diversify the economy. If the flood proved anything about the Magic City, it's that it can come together and accomplish anything. Ten years from now, the, the folks in Minot will look back on what they've done as a result of all the difficult times that we've had, whether it be 
the resiliency dollars or the downtown infrastructure or anything else and say, you know, it was all worth it. And we made it happen. So I think Minot collectively will be able to take a step back in a few years from now and say, the city didn't do that. We did it because we're part of the community. Well, school being back in session means that more kids, bikes, cars, and buses will be on the road. Driving around a school bus can be dangerous if the laws aren't followed and children are the victims. Every year, more kids are killed outside of a bus than on it when things like this happen. What ends up happening is most kids are killed or injured outside the bus because they're getting off the bus. The school bus has its red flashing lights, the stop arms out, and people either approaching the bus from behind or approaching the bus from the front do not stop. The child walks around and the child gets run over the head and injured. Minot buses are equipped with several different safety measures to ensure drivers are aware that children are getting on or off the bus, including flashing red lights, stop signs, and 10-foot crossing bars that keep kids out of the danger zone where bus drivers can't see them. And with high distracted driving rates, awareness and knowing the laws are key. When they need to know what to do and not to do when approaching the school bus with the red flashing lights, that's one. Two, they need to slow down. Any vehicle approaching the, the school bus from either way, so whether it's from behind or, or the front of the bus, they have to stop um, when that stop sign and the red flashing lights are out. The school system passes out lights like these to make sure children are more visible, but it comes down to the drivers. We, we really have to be diligent as a community to make sure that we're, we're being extra cautious around those school bus when those kids are getting off and on. And even if you don't get caught immediately, camera systems on the buses mean the ticket could come in the mail later on. The video system on the buses are um, really, really good. So um, they, they generally can get the, you know, the vehicle description, the license plate, and sometimes the driver you know, description. And the, and the bus drivers are trained to, to look for you know, that type of stuff too. The ticket for not stopping for a school bus is a $100 fine and six points on your license. Love has been the key for the Arts family since losing their son Nathan just a year and a half ago. Today they held a blood drive in his honor, something Nathan always wanted to be a part of, and now his family says it continues to grow. A year ago, the purpose of the blood drive at the Little Flower Church was to help Nathan Arts earn his Eagle Scout Award. That was accomplished, and now the drive, in its second year, lives on in his spirit, a spirit of not allowing what you're going through keep you from helping others. When we have grief and we're suffering with our grief, as a family we say, okay, what's the purpose? What are we going to offer that grief to? And we found it's you take that grief and you try to help others and you have something to do with that grief. This year the numbers have doubled. The energy was unmistakable in the church foyer and United Blood Service officials say they plan to get more staff for next year. I, I just walked in the door and you can you can hear it grow, right? The noise in itself tells you that people want to do what Nathan wanted to do. And that's to give back. Last year, Nathan was instrumental in planning the drive through writings and lists he made. This year was no different. His mother came across a journal entry about receiving a blood transfusion and used what he described as her motivation. And he said the gifts of love and courage that I received today. And so I just ran into that in planning this one. So it seems like he keeps giving me the messages or the inspiration. Because they've seen firsthand the difference a blood donation can make. Thanks for all the donors. Like Brenda said in the past, the gift Nathan felt the blood was to sustain his life. It's, this is our way of giving back to many, many units that Nathan got. And through this drive, his family and all the people he's impacted can remember love. Just something about Nathan. He's, he's always here. The family says they spent time calling volunteers to donate and filling slots. This cause was important to their brother and their son, and now they feel the need to carry on his wish. If you'd like to donate blood, contact United Blood Services at 877-827-4376. You can donate up to three times a year. You can't help but admire and appreciate the love that the Arts family shares with the community. They've taken this loss and um, completely turned it around. I've spent a lot of time with them, and it's pretty incredible.